Good morning, welcome. It's Easter Day, the Lord is risen, and you're joining us for worship on the island of Jersey. And I'm at Le Hookby, an ancient burial site, with the stone before me, which leads into the chamber. But it's empty, just as it was on that first Easter Day. <laughs> Oh 
Let's pray together. O oh Lord God, eternal creator, you dwell in the hearts of all who worship you today. We praise and thank you for raising Jesus from the dead. Death is dead. Love has won. Christ has conquered. Setting us free to worship and adore you. To you belongs all the honour. And Jesus Christ, merciful Saviour, you meet us when we turn to you. On that first Easter morning, you rose from the grave to conquer sin and death forever. To you belongs all the glory. And Holy Spirit, divine presence, you are the very breath of life. We receive the peace of the risen Christ, as did those first disciples in the upper room. To you belongs all the praise. O oh God, three in one, we confess that our lives have been full of death and hate instead of life and love and hope. Forgive us our sins and strengthen us in all that is good. As we receive your assurance of forgiveness, you fill us afresh with life and love, stirring hope and compelling us to pour life, love and hope out into the lives of others. Amen. Three days after Jesus died, some women who were friends of Jesus went to visit his tomb. The stone had been rolled away. Jesus' body was not in the tomb. Something amazing had happened. Two angels told the women that Jesus wasn't dead any longer and that God raised Jesus from being dead to a new life. The women ran to tell the rest of Jesus' friends and along the way they met Jesus. Jesus is alive! Well, I've entered deep into the tomb of Luke, but you had to stoop incredibly low uh, to get in. But we're in the middle of this ancient uh, burial site, uh, a place where for centuries people have mused upon what it means to live and what it means to die. And so by being here, it connects 
us to the story of Easter, the tomb to which Peter ran when he first heard of the possibility of hope being born again. And we're going to hear a story by Di Woolridge, who explores Peter's emotions on that first uh, Easter day. And thank you to Sally and Ellen for that puppet story, which just told us of the story of Easter uh, for the children. And then we're going to hear uh, read to us uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 11. Three pounds at the door, our hearts pounding out of our chest. They found a hiding spot. Get down, shut up! We wait for the inevitable. Nothing. False alarm. Three more pounds at the door. Let me in quick, she said. We opened the door and bolted back shut. Mary, what are you doing? You're trying to get us killed, we said. He's, he's, he's gone, she said. What do you mean he's gone? I didn't stick around for the answer. I took the bolt off the door and I just bolted. Sprint into the tomb with a million thoughts sprinting through my head. John flies past and beats me there. I catch up and John's just standing there gobsmacked. The stone was rolled over. I stoop into the place where Jesus' lifeless body lay just hours before. And now it's empty. By the clothes he was buried in, folded up tidy. It was empty. We look at each other speechless. I mean, could it? Has he done the impossible? The R word? We couldn't even bring ourselves to say it. Or we just been played, I thought. Some kind of sick joke, some trap set by the Romans, rabbis, Pilot, take your pick. We didn't hang around long enough to find out. We legged it back to the hiding spot. The others opened the door and bolted it back shut. And that's just before it happened. You know, the first time. Should have seen our faces. I jumped out of my skin. We told Thomas he wasn't buying it. So a week later, it happened again. Should have seen his face. You'd think we'd known better at the same time, right? After things settle down, we go back home to Galilee. So we're down Tiberia Sea, right? There's me, Nate, Tom, James, John, the Zebedee boys. It's pitch black. We're 100 yards out. Fishermen right in our sweet spot. Trying to make a catch. Staying in the Bismillie. Anyway, day's breaking and this randomer is wandering the shore. Any luck, boys, he said. Not a single sardine, we said. Try the other side of the boat, he said. So we cast our net the other side of the boat, and what do you know? So many fish, not even mass attacks could count them. It's him, said John. Well, what are we doing faffing about with all this fish, I thought. I dive straight in, splash, head down, swim to shore. I get there, and he's lit up this barbie. How'd you get on with the catch? Any joy, he said. Bring him over here, plenty of room, he said. I look round and see the boys dragging out of the water what must have been the biggest catch I'd ever seen. Anyone for breakfast? He said. So there we were. Stuffing our faces with fish sarnies, just staring at him. We knew it was him. Well, no one dared ask. After breakfast, he asked me if I loved him three times. Yes, Lord, I said. As it brought to mind the three times I flat out denied him. Look after my sheep, he said. You got it, Lord, I said. He had, you know, done the impossible, risen. One time he asked us who he said he was. You're the Christ, I said. The anointed one, the one we'd all been waiting for, the hand-picked rescuer. Still, I didn't see it coming, not the way it played out. But it was always part of the plan. He came to bear our brokenness to his breaking point, from fully perfect 
to fully broken, to two days left and fully fixed, so we can be forever fixed in Him. Like I said, He done the impossible. Risen. And there's no denying it. That changes everything. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Well, we've just uh, climbed the top of that uh, green and lovely hill, which the tomb is deep below us. And uh, this 12th century chapel is built at the top. Perhaps a reminder to us all that the faith of the church is built uh, over the empty tomb and the knowledge that Jesus is risen. And it was to that tomb that Peter ran. I've always had a soft spot for Peter. He's impetuous. Sometimes he finds his words getting him in all sorts of trouble. He even rebuked Jesus at Caesarea Philippi. The night of the Lord's Supper, they, they argue over who's the greatest. Sometimes his just words get him into trouble. But in this passage, in Luke chapter 24, we're told that when he heard of the empty tomb, he just ran. He ran. We're not told what he said, but we know that he ran. He could have said, I'll finish my cup of tea, I'll do it later. He could have said, okay, and meandered off. But what he did was to run. In a hot country, it's rare to run. But there was something so urgent, something so compelling for Peter that he simply had to lean forward and pump his arms, get his legs, get his lungs bursting with energy to see whether the hope to which he held that Christ would live was possible. The only other person in the Gospels that we hear that ran was the father of the prodigal son. When he saw the lad coming back from afar, we're told that he just ran. There's only two people in the Gospels who ran. The father with all the hope that a son might come back, and Peter with all the hope that the Lord might be risen. 
I wonder what it is that you're running towards today, or perhaps running away from. It could be that your words and your actions have got you into trouble. Maybe there are things that you just know are not quite right. You need to leave them aside. Well, the invitation for you and for me today is let's run to the empty tomb and start life again in Christ. It's the great opportunity not to dawdle, not to drink our cup of tea, but with urgency run towards this story, this invitation where Christ offers you and me life in all its fullness. You know, the world needs hope. A year ago, uh, this Easter felt very different, didn't it? A year ago. Now, the flowers are just reminding us that there is hope, despite all the problems, despite all the challenges, despite all the loss there has been, there is hope. And the great story of Easter is that there is hope that God has fulfilled his promise, that the Christ who was dead is alive. And I just urge you, wherever you are, to run. And if you can't run, do it in your mind. Run towards the story. Run towards the Lord. Leave behind anything you need no longer carry. Be earnest, leave it behind. And start life again. Like Peter, who discovered that in Christ, whatever the past, even betrayal, need not determine the person that he would become in the future. So my friends, praise God. The tomb is empty. The church is built upon the empty tomb and the risen Christ and invites you and me to run towards him and discover life in all his fullness.
Blessed are you, God and Father of us all, giver of life and life eternal. By the love of your Son you have triumphed over hatred. In his power light has conquered darkness and life has overcome death. You have opened for us the gate of eternal life. Blessed are you, O God, now and forever. Lord, we are Easter people. Let Alleluia be our song. We give you thanks and praise today for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and for his appearances to his loved ones. We rejoice with the whole worldwide church in the joy of the risen Lord. May we who know the good news go and tell others that he is risen and grant that your church may help to bring peace and hope to a troubled world. We ask you to give courage to all who have not seen, and yet believe. Lord, we are Easter people. Let Alleluia be our song. Risen Lord, we seek your peace, peace for our war-torn world, peace between nations and people, peace in our dealings with each other, peace in our hearts and homes. Lord, we are Easter people. Let Alleluia be our song. As you appeared to the disciples in the house, come enter our homes. Come enter into our fear and darkness. Come enter into our enclosed lives and our fear to venture. Come with the glorious freedom you offer to the children of God. Lord, we are Easter people. Let Alleluia be our song. We come with all who weep by gravesides, all who mourn the loss of a loved one, all who feel lonely or deserted, May all who mourn find new hope and joy in you. We remember all who are terminally ill and those who are caring for them. We think of those who have a heavy weight on their hearts and minds today. We ask that we may all know the hope of eternal life. Lord, we rejoice with the disciples, all your saints and your worldwide church, united today in the joy of the risen Lord. May Alleluia be our triumphant, hope-filled song today and always. In the wonderful name of Jesus, our Saviour, we pray. Amen. Our Father, Atol Ernav, Galad de Deirnas, Sia Fata la Tua, M. Shabeni, Jena Sezulini, Woman Ren Yong Ding Shi, Ting Re, Shige Woman, Mutire Gerere O, Zitazo Zedu. Perdónanos nuestras deudas, como también nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Perdónanos nuestras deudas, como también nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. 
Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit. May delivery new Duma. Amen. So thank you for joining us on the island of Jersey for worship today. And thank you, Jenny, for that beautiful Lord's Prayer uh, that you created, which reminds us of the global family that today declare that the Lord is risen. And so from La Hutby here in Jersey, I wish you a very blessed Easter. And I offer that to you in the name of the Father who created you. In the name of the Son who died for us and the Holy Spirit that gives us life. May that rich blessing be with you and those that you love and hold dear in your hearts. And may we all run towards hope, towards the Lord and new life in him. God bless. Have a great Easter. Mm-hmm.